want to lift your hands and tell God thank you. Because isn't that just like God? He'll bring you out in the middle of it. Somebody say, in the middle of it. Uh, I mean, when you think you're about to go under, he'll bring you out in the middle of it. Oh, y'all ain't talking back to me. I say, when you think you're going under, he'll bring you out in the middle of it. When you think you just took all you can take, God will snatch you up and bring you out in the middle of it. Come on, somebody on the shelf. Lord, bring me out of this in the middle of it. Well, good evening, everybody. Grace and peace to all of you from God our Father. What a blessing it is for us to be here on our midweek service. I'm so excited about tonight, and uh, so good to see so many of you logging on on Facebook tonight. I see uh, Sister Jackie Causey is on. We got uh, Deacon Brewer is on. Sister Richardson is on. Uh, Deacon Brian is on. Sharon McKnight is on. Carnesha, she is on. And hey, y'all know how we roll on Wednesday night and on Sunday. Please make sure you like and share. Like and share our page on tonight. I pray that everybody went out and got at least five people to like our social media statuses today. You know, today is Wednesday. And uh, we're believing the Lord just for people to add on to our social media platforms. So please like and share. It's going to be an incredible night tonight. An incredible night tonight. And uh, so please make sure that you're liking and uh, sharing our page. I see people that are coming on tonight. We're believing in God for at least 100 people or more on, on uh, Facebook and at least another 100 on YouTube on tonight. So please like and share. And it looks like Facebook's kind of jumping a little bit. So if we can get to the lower thirds to let everybody know that they can view us on YouTube as well. YouTube as well. Again, it's going to be a great night. We know what today is. It's the beginning already. We're in the month of February. Can you believe that? We're in the month of February already on the second day, the second month in 2022. And I know I put it out on social media today. I'm believing God for my double portion. How many of you believe in God for double portion, double portion, and double favor, double increase in every area of our life? Well, listen, we're going to get right at it tonight, as you can tell. I am not on here alone, and uh, we have our, our family on with us tonight. We've got family on with us tonight, and uh, we're so excited, amen, to have Elder Edward Long on here with us on tonight. Good evening. How are you, sir? I'm doing absolutely wonderful. I'm excited. Uh, it's always a joy to see you. Y'all see, this gentleman has this infectious smile. <laughs> I know you're never mad at him. You can't be. You feel me? It's, it's no way with this smile. And so I'm always happy to be with you. I thank you for receiving me tonight. And uh, I'm looking forward to a great conversation. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Well, I'm excited about the conversation again. As you can tell, it's going to be exciting tonight. So please make sure you go out, like, and share the page. Go tell Lottie Dottie and everybody we're on tonight with Elder Edward Long. It's going to be crazy tonight. So get ready, get ready, get ready. Hey, you're on here tonight. You got a new book out. Yes, sir. Called Son of a Bishop. Now, if you're going to say it, we got to say it right. All right, all right, all right, all right. We got to say the tone Son of a bishop. All right, all right, all right. Son of a bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let us get it right. I heard a lot about it. Uh, you kind of shared a little bit with me. I saw uh, the cover of it floating around on social media. Uh -huh. And I just kind of want to talk a little bit about it. What inspired you to write the book in the first place, the um, Son of a Bishop? Great question. What, what was the inspiration concerning the book? Well, uh, I, I just want to you know, set the stage for just a moment and, 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 and greet everybody. I see my home girl. Uh, you know, she she's a very faithful one. You know that. You yes, feel yes, me? Yes. And uh, she's gonna pull up and support and all. And just thank you to everybody, the whole entire new uh, new hope. Excuse me, uh, family. When I get together with him, you know, we got that that, yeah. that, that new birth connection. <laughs> but uh, new new hope family. And uh, you know, the past few years have been very interesting. And and that word right there is probably understatement. I'm sure I can find some synonyms that, that would more accurately describe what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, you, you've been walking with me through this period, and we've been walking together, yeah. if you will. 
And, you know, for those who are streaming, uh, those who are in the room who may not know uh, whose son I am, of course, I'm a son of God, uh, but Bishop Eddie Lee Long is my father. And so last month, January 15th, marks five years since Pop's transition, yeah. okay? Yeah. And, you know, when people think about it, it's like, wow, it's been that long? You know, because for many of us, it feel like a few months, maybe a year-ish or so ago, if you will. Uh, but tell somebody, time be moving. Yeah. So, so, so we, we got to get to moving ourselves, you That's feel right. me? That's right. And uh, I, I got a associate of mine. Her name is Shanita Foster. And she once said something to me that it resonated with me. And ladies, y'all will feel this. You know, you be at work, somebody say something to you, it done messed up your whole day. <laughs> you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fellas, you know, playoffs been happening. Uh, I know the Giants didn't make the playoffs. It's cool. <laughs> but, you know, it, it, things happen, and yeah. your team come up on the short end of the stick. Yeah. All of a sudden, you know, you, you messed up for the rest of the day. You upset, all of this kind of stuff. And, and we got to find ways to check our emotions, emotional barometers, if you will. And so the statement was, listen, if it ain't going to matter in five years, don't spend more than five minutes on it. Wow, wow. Hear me. You know, wow. if, if something happened in church and somebody mess up your shout, you get a wow. text message or something, go in the bathroom, cry your tears, don't mess up your mascara. But we don't need you to disappear for more than five minutes yeah. if it's not going to matter in five years. Yeah. That, that, that's a good way of keeping things in proper perspective. Yeah. But when you're dealing with my father's transition, and we're talking about legacy. Pop had a statement. We all know it. When you die, will it matter that you were born? Mm. This is talking about life impact and legacy. That definitely, Pop's impact definitely matters beyond these five years of his transition. Yeah. And so because of that, I gave myself permission to take five years to the T to write this book. When he transitioned, I knew I was gonna write a book. And this ain't the only thing, it's more projects that are gonna be coming out. But I took five years to go through the emotional roller coaster, the pendulum, the swinging, left to right of feeling like this, being sad about this, trying to mourn this while that's going on. Once that is settled, then this happens, and all of these kind of things and finding the joy in certain things, finding the moments of happiness, et cetera, so that I could pin something, not from a place of enangerment, not from a place of disappointment or disgruntlement, but from a place where I can truly celebrate my father. I can truly have clear and focused dialogue with myself, with the father, and then with you, the reader. Five years. Wow, wow. You said a lot there in, in the opening statement. Um, one of the questions I wanted to actually talk about, the pendulum swinging mm -hmm. back and forth. Where, where would you say you are now after writing the book? <laughs> um, you know, when we was growing up going to carnivals and stuff, fairs yeah. or what have you, you know, they had that little wooden ship you would get on. And it'd go like this and like this. And so, you know, naturally our mind thinks that that's how the pendulum swings, you know, just left to right. But then Six Flags reinvented that thing, you know, and, and, and now that thing swing all around. <laughs> you go rock for a second, then it's going 360 you and all of that. So um, my point is that the experience of the last five years has changed my perspective on what the pendulum is. It ain't this. <laughs> it's, <laughs> wow. you feel wow. me? Wow. So uh, I, I pray that I'm at 12 o'clock right now. Wow. That I'm on top of things. And if things shift, you know, I know that that momentum is just the Lord's gonna bring it back to where it's supposed to be. And so everything ain't at 12 o'clock. But as I just mentioned, I'm trusting the Lord that whatever is out of time will synchronize in the right time and be where it's supposed to be. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So tell me something, How you, now, now that you've written the book, what do your siblings think about the book? You know, I appreciate my sister Taylor. <laughs> okay. You feel me? Um, I, I really appreciate her because, 
you know, she went and ordered it, spent her money, and she got the paperback. That one was 1999. Okay. It is 1999. Actually, I think Amazon took me down. I think it's like 1549 or something. You better get it while it's on sale. <laughs> okay. All right. But um, she went and got it. She posted it on social media. You know, and, and that means a lot. You feel me? Um, because family knows you, and then family thinks that they know you. You know, one thing that my dad would say to me, I, I imagine he said it to my siblings at some point, was um, I have to deal with all of y'all differently because y'all are different. Y'all two different genders. Uh, I, I, I make reference to it in the book, and I can say it jokingly now because I would crack this joke with my dad and say, man, you know, uh, you the only bishop I know with four baby mamas. <laughs> uh -huh. And, and, and let, me, let me clean that up for some people who may have gotten lost in that statement. Okay. You know, I'm from my father's first marriage. Mm -hmm. And then my younger brother, Jared, is from his present marriage. So my father's, uh, I, I guess you say, no, no, because that would mean she's, but her late husband, my father's widow now, is my bonus mother, mm -hmm. who you know as Elder Long, Elder mm -hmm. Vanessa Long. And then uh, Taylor is adopted, and then my older sibling, Eric, is adopted. So here's four different women. Um, Eric's mother's Italian. Uh, praise God, Taylor was able to find a connection point with her birth family, and then the Lord gave me the grace to actually identify them and put that together, and that's two years ago. You follow me that she's come back into f fellowship with her birth family and her father and I you would think we brothers you know we we just kick it like that now and it's amazing he was like man I used to watch your dad on TV who would have thought that he was raising my daughter you feel me uh, so so you know we have all of these different backgrounds which shapes uh, our outlook we have our collective experiences coupled with our individual experiences with pop. And so, you know, my hope is that everybody comes out and shares their truth. You feel me? Um, I appreciate Jared. Jared was at my initial book signing. You know, he came, helped with set up, break down, all of these types of things. And so, um, ashes becoming beautiful, man. Yeah. It yeah. is where we are. Yeah. That's good. That's good. You know, it's one thing to be a PK, mm -hmm. but what is it really like being the son of Bishop Eddie L. Long <laughs> with the world pulling at him constantly, and then you hear the raising of spiritual sons and daughters that affectionately know him as dad or pops, as you refer him to. Mm -hmm. What has that been like being the biological son? Mm -hmm. Um well, you like to say you got PKs, then you got BKs, yeah, Bishop's okay, kids. Okay, okay, you know? okay. Talk to us about that. But, but you know, Burger King say, you know, have it your way. Yeah, yeah. It ain't your way. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. We, we, we going to start there. She understand. Okay. Yeah, as a BW, she understand. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> it, it, you know, it ain't all your way. But, you know, it's not all bad. It's not all good. You follow me? Um, Paul Morton, Bishop Paul Morton was kind enough to write a blurb concerning my book, which is in the book, and I, play, I placed it in two places, on the back of the book and, and within the book. And um, he mentioned how he is also a son of a bishop, you feel me? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, talked about the graces, the, the, the good things, as well as the advantages, as well as some of the disadvantages. And so it, it, it's not one way or another way, it's it's just the way that it comes to us. Um, you know, people ask me often, what's it like being Bishop Long's son? For me, that's my normal because it's all I've ever known. You know, uh, you, you coming into his life, him coming into your life, there, there is a different, um, a different type of reverence mm -hmm. that you come in with because you've had an external perspective. My perspective was never external. It's always been internal. You feel me? Got it. And so because of that, there, there's never a light switch that just comes on. You follow me? Right. From birth, 
the light is on, this is what it is. Uh, which empowers me to be able to hold in tension the good and maybe not so good, the understood with the misunderstood, all of these things because it's all uh, 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 encapsulated in Father. There's no hyphen to that. There's no dash to it. You feel me? It's just Father, period. So it's my normal no different than your normal with your father is, with your normal with your mother or father is. Me coming into some of you all's households, I would be blown away. You feel me? Because it's new to me. There, there's a point that I, can, that I can pinpoint and say, okay, this is when I linked up with Miss Jones or Miss, Mr. Johnson, and I can track it from there. But, you know, even as I'm preparing, my wife and I, for our child. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. That's you know, uh, for, for our son or daughter, the beginning is the beginning. That's it. So, you know, as, as much of an anomaly or abstract as I may be, you know, and I'm saying that because I just got off the phone with a pastor. Just ain't like, bro, you are weird. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you are different. You are, you know, the, the church don't know what to do with you. You know what I'm saying? But for my son yeah. or daughter, it's, it's my dad, what do you mean? You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it, it's so that rationale, they won't see it the same way. And so there are certain things concerning my father. Now, I recognize the anointing. I recognize the gifting. I recognize the whatever. It, it's, it's not necessarily magnified to me until I step out of it and go places and realize, oh, this ain't, this ain't the flavor of the month everywhere. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, 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 right. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Right. It's all I've known, man. Right. So how is it seeing him in that anointing or his element on, on a Sunday morning or ministering in, in the anointing of God's resting on his life, is it still looking at dad or is that looking at now the bishop, mm -hmm. the pastor, mm -hmm. um, my covering? Is it, is it a difference when you see him then or is it still, that's my normal, that's my daddy? There was never for me a difference. Okay. Because i just been a part of the matriculation, if you will. Um, I never once called my dad bishop. Mm. The Lamb's Book of Life, when you get a chance to read it, y'all get a chance to go through it, whenever that day is, it won't be recorded that Ed Long Jr. ever called Bishop Eddie Lee Long mm -hmm. bishop. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Of course, as I'm referring to you, I say that. But I never go up and be like, Bishop, that was good today. <laughs> he never had the luxury, if you will, of hearing me call him that. Or the misfortune. Because for me, mm. any other title or name takes away from father. You feel me? It, 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 I feel if I would have ever referred to him in that manner, it would have been the biggest insult I could have gave to him. The biggest. You feel me? I, I said it during this home going, and, and I can rest in it a little more now. You know, I, I like Deion Sanders and, um, you know, growing up, Iron Mike, you know, we had Evander Holyfield here in the A. You feel me? Um, you know, Michael Jordan, MJ, you know, all of these guys. But for me, my father was my superstar, is my superstar, my hero, X, Y, and Z. And that's something maybe people might never could relate to. I I'll break it down in a different way. Next to my father, the next person would be my grandfather. My maternal grandfather, not my daddy's daddy, which I love Papa, but my, my mama's daddy, because I grew up in his house as well. And in his city, he was the entrepreneur, he was a uh, trailblazer, he was, you know, uh, came through Jim Crow, segregation, integration, World War II veteran, 
launched two service companies in a redneck town in 1945. My grandparents, his parents, were first generation free men. Their parents were slaves. You feel me? Yeah. So, you know, within all of that, the imprint that he made on me, he was a superstar. Now, for Pop to be a superstar in my eyes, and some of the persons that I just mentioned, looking at him as a father, Deion Sanders being one. I remember when uh, Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, you know, he raised the generation musically, sought out my dad to sit with him for counsel concerning his life, etc. There's no way I could look at anybody else, you know what I'm saying? Right. It, through that same lens. Mm -hmm. And so it positioned me, even to this day when I meet people, it's like, cool, bro. I respect your craft, I respect what you do, I respect X, Y, and Z. But man, my dad is a rock star. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. He, he, he literally transformed his industry. Still, say what you want about him. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Michael Jackson transformed music. Prince transformed music. Iron Mike transformed boxing. Deion Sanders transformed sports. Michael Jordan transformed sports. But Bishop Eddie Lee Long transformed the faith game, man. Man, that's good. Come on, give me some hearts and thumbs up online. That's good. That's real good. So with, with that being said, and you think about the book, The Son of a Bishop. I hope I got that right. Um, how will this book help another son of a bishop? Wow, great question. How, how is it going to help them? What so, do you look, what do they look? What should they look to to grab from this book? A few things. Great question. One, look to have identity affirmed. Y'all done heard it a thousand times. Pastors' kids is the worst. Yeah. There's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, my name was Young Dirty Bishop. Yeah. All right. There we go. That, that's, that's a catch-all right there. <laughs> Whatever you fathoming is probably true. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so in that, a pastor's offspring, son, daughter, whomever it may be, to find affirmation in, I'm not alone in my journey of trying to find myself in the midst of what I didn't ask to inherit. You feel me? Mm -hmm. None of us choose the portal in which we come through. None of us choose the womb. None of us choose the scrotum. None of us choose how the Lord, Jeremiah 1 and 5, before I formed you, I knew you, and I'm going to shoot you out this way. None of us choose that. And so we find ourselves where we find ourselves trying to find ourselves. And so I want to encourage now going beyond just the faith because I'm talking about lineage things, successional things. Encourage anybody who's second, third generation of whatever you're an extension of. It could be that your family has a car dealership and you know it's on you to be the next GM for the dealership or whatever. But I got this other expression inside of me as well. How do I respect what I'm attached to while being in pursuit of what is keeping me up at night? Wow. You feel me? Wow. So helping to navigate wow. these type of things. Um, how to deal with people and the pressures that come with those type of roles. And then lastly, how to develop your voice to speak to your parents about where you are and where you're looking to go. Having those tough conversations. So I'm sharing my experiences, where I messed up, where I got it right, mm -hmm. what I didn't understand then, what I understand now, what I was trying to relay the mail I was trying to deliver that wasn't deliverable at the time, but then how it got delivered. 
and then the truth of where I am now and remaining faithful again that whatever hadn't worked out will in God's time that's good yeah that's good so you notice I guess I've known you from a lot of different names mm -hmm. Edward Cody mm -hmm. Dirty mm -hmm. Dirty Bishop mm -hmm. you know me when I was messing up your name <laughs> I used to call him leper you know? <laughs> Pastor Leper. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're talking about the son of the bishop and so where are you now and how have you transformed or what, what were some of those things going on in your life when you were dirty when you're the dirty bishop what, what, what was what was going on with you back then and how did that did it affect ministry were you uh, were you at a rebellious state at that time with ministry were you upset with ministry and then you became an elder in the church. How, what was happening there? Um, it's funny. It's a chapter in the book that's called The Call. All right? So uh, I'm going to talk around that because I, I don't want to be spoiler alert, if you will. You feel me? Um, young Dirty Bishop was just that. And, and it's not a name I gave to myself. You know, oftentimes uh, in life, people may get themselves a name, just especially artists, just whatever they feel it. Um, but then, quite often as well, your environment will name you by studying you, if you will. And of course, you got little names, childhood stuff that come from just whatever. So playing football at Stevenson High School, uh, a teammate of mine, Stephen Toots, we've known each other since fifth grade. And it was around about 11th grade, we walk into the field for practice. He come out doing this little dance. We used to pipe up real strong before practice, you know, just getting that momentum going. And he came up. He was like, it's the bishop. It's the dirty bishop. It's the dirty bishop. And it just stunk. You feel me? Wow. And he was calling me that because we just played dirty. You know, uh, I mean, you know, we was playing in the pile, uh, you know, pinching people after the play is over with, you know, just all them little tactics to get in people here when you're playing football. And for me, I've always been slim. You feel me? I've been strong but slim. So I played tight end. You feel me? And you would be a small tight end. Yeah. So let alone, I, I, you know what I'm saying, I played tight end and receiver. Yeah. But I primarily played tight end. Right. So here it is. In high school, I'm weighing, you know, 170, 168, whatever maybe 175 wet and uh you know i'm blocking guys to 230 250 etc so i had to be dirty <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah. you know i had to let you know hey man i'm gonna get on your nerves for these four quarters yeah. you, you're gonna get tired of me like quickly you yeah. feel me and so the name just stuck and uh i i, I really personified it in other ways as well being promiscuous, wilding out, you know, at that time, Lil John, the East Side Boys was big. Uh, the Dirty South movement was big. Pastor Troy, all of these artists. We was in the parties, we was wilding. Uh, going down to FAMU, it got worse. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my, my, my dad called me, cause I think we got our grades for the first semester of freshman year, when we were back at school for the second semester. And my GPA, mind you, in high school, I was a 3-3 student. You feel me? Um, could have been much better than that. I just did enough to do enough. My GPA is 1-9 after that freshman se semester. So, you know, if y'all want to know what he said, we can go across the street off a of church property. <laughs> and I can tell you uh, verbatim what he said. Yeah, yeah. He might have been the dirty bishop as yeah. well in that conversation, okay? And, and, and so uh, I, I began to get it together. But I wowed out, and I purposely went to FAMU because I needed to be far enough from home that I could do me. Yeah. My oldest sibling, Eric, he went to Georgia Southern. It was too close. Anything he did, it was like, you know, them Looney Tunes uh, uh, memos, <laughs> post mail, it was, psh, Pop knew it all. Yeah, yeah. I had to go somewhere far enough away, and I felt like across state lines, 
that just was going to do enough. You yeah, feel me? Yeah. Um, but I began to switch it up because I want to fully answer your question. When around my junior year and I was on radio, doing radio, I interned here. I had the primetime show in Tallahassee, Florida, doing hip hop, all of that. And I, I realized, I had this epiphany. It was like, bro, you're not going to be able to go back to Atlanta doing this. I'm playing, you know, 50 Cent just dropped in the club. You know, I mean, I'm just trying to help y'all understand the era. It's just not going to work in Atlanta where your father is. So what's up? And I started looking for me in music, and I couldn't find it. What I mean is that, and this, this is where I curated a genre I call urban inspiration. I love the music. I'm one of them people that I love God and I love trap music. But it wasn't existing. So I began to adjust my raps, my sound, to be what I was looking for. And then I found out something. Usually when you go through the albums, I know albums are different now. We don't get to pick the CDs up and do all that, stand in line and all of that. I miss that. But usually at the end of the, of the album, the artist will have some kind of positive song. Mm -hmm. You feel me? You know, it might be Tupac's Dear Mama. Mm -hmm. It might be some, you know, I got to get my life right and get out the streets. It may not be Jesus, Jesus, but there was some positivity there. So right. I began playing those shows, I mean songs, within my show. Right. And then I just developed a playlist, again, that I call Urban Inspiration. And then it turned into a radio show called The Good Life Radio. And so we independently, my cousin and I, Dewan Coleon Smith, we independently syndicated this in like 16. We were up in your area. We were in Rochester, New York. Okay. On the station up there, we were in South Bend, Indiana, uh, New Newport News, Virginia, uh, New Orleans, Tampa, Jacksonville, etc. So I really began to create my own way based off of a void a need and filling that need. I kept the dirty going. I stopped going by Dirty Bishop as much and just, that was that young wave, young Jeezy, Lil Wayne, all of that. So I just started going by Young Dirty instead. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Just to let church folk feel comfortable. I was fine. Right, <laughs> you right, know what I'm saying? Right, right. And um, from there, we were doing the show and then my dad messed me up calling me to be a youth pastor. You got to read the book to find the rest wow, after that. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Wow, that was great. Listen, those of you watching us online, if you got some questions you would like to ask, go ahead and put it in the chat so we can get some of your questions and ask uh, uh, Elder Long tonight some of the questions that you might have on tonight. Um, I'm, go I'm going to hit you with this one. Um, so uh, me and my wife, you know, we're reading the book. Okay. And uh, so she's good. like, this is good, this is good, this is good. <laughs> and uh, so she's reading out loud. She says, oh, this is good, this is good, this is good. So she's reading, reading, reading. And so there's a point in the book where I think the, the title of this portion of the book is Sex Ed. Oh, man. Talk to us about that. <laughs> Talk to us about that. Yeah, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't spoil it. You would want to go there. I got you. <laughs> Listen. So, 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 Pop was very passionate, which you know, yeah. about the next generation and making sure that God's kingdom standard is known, respected, yeah. and then personified. Yeah. And so in sex ed, overarching, that's what we're dealing with. I'm dealing with a situation concerning uh, sexuality and uh, its impact on my generation. And so, as a father and a son, we're wrestling with the direction, we're wrestling with exposure to, and all of that. And, you know, here it is, this, 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 this story takes place I'm guessing that would have been around, yeah, 94, 
93, somewhere in that space. 1994, 93. I know I don't look that, you know, <laughs> it's all good. Praise God. Uh, but it's, it's some crown jewels that Pop is dropping in this chapter that parents can glean off of even right now. You got to read it. You know, we, we, we're deal now, now we're dealing with the Thabies generation. And for those who don't know what that is, what that is is that parents are choosing not to elect a gender for their son or daughter yeah. at birth. Mm -hmm. But to allow the child to choose at whatever cognitive stage that they feel is appropriate for the children. So in the interim of time, they're calling the children, the children, not children, the children, they, T-H-E-Y. Hence, you get the babies. So you got to be careful now because, you know, some in this room either are or children of baby boomers. Yeah. That's a generation. If you're a child of a baby boomer, then you're probably a Gen Xer. After Gen Xer, you, you, you may have younger siblings who are in my demo, millennials. Now, I want to be clear. Everybody that's young is not a millennial. Okay. I'm so sick and tired of hearing boomers call y'all millennials, millennials, them millennials. Them, if they're in elementary school, they're not a millennial. <laughs> if they're in high school, they're not a millennial. Millennials <laughs> stop in 2020, okay? So the graduating class from high school in 2020, that was the last class of millennials all right so a millennial is someone who graduated from high school between 2000 and 2020 that's it so everyone after is a part of generation y all right i'm sorry generation z millennials are generation y generation z the gen zers okay and so now we're on the cusp I can't even say that because that my words will be form agreement with it. The enemy is trying to pre present the Thabes generation. It's a generation of instead of finding an identity in God and in Christ, it would be a generation that determines their identity through confusion. That's not good. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go another further. You Come can on. stop me because nope. this is your house. Okay. So I don't want to get you in trouble. Okay. I got my dad in me, though. Okay, but and you know whose son I am. I got you. I got okay. you. I, okay. All right, I'm with all you. Right. So we roll. So, so we speaking now to principalities. And this is why we have to be involved in politics yeah. from a kingdom disposition, yeah. not from a racial disposition. Yeah. Racism is going to be. Mm -hmm. So if you're only voting based off of the racism, you short sighted. Yeah. So I don't give a flying flip if somebody hates me or does not hate me or loves me, whatever, because of the complex tities of my skin. That's mm -hmm. shallow. Yeah. All right. I want to get to the bone right. of it. We, we voted 13, 14, 15 months ago. This present administration is signing off on Thabes generation things, and nobody is saying anything. It's beyond disgruntling because we made all this noise concerning the previous administration based on racial things. The previous administration, no matter how racially messed up things were, they still sent a hundred million or so to a HBCUs. The present administration repealed it. Nobody's saying nothing. We got this Thaby thing that is taking place. Now if you're a parent, understand what the administration has presented is that parents would not be able to determine the child's gender. The child would be given children's rights that the parent can't even have no say-so in. 
And if we're going to put this on the scale, parentism weighs a little bit more to me than does racism. Because your racism don't have to come in this house, but I got to be in this house to raise this child. So these are the type of sex ed issues that I'm praying that this story begins to open up because my father's wisdom is speaking to, y'all know Pop didn't speak to time. He spoke in a time in a certain dispensation to transcend time for kingdom purpose and eternity. We got to be awake, y'all, to what's taking place before we wake up and we don't have no rights taken away by the ones that we endorsed. Oh, that was good. That was good. So what, 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 what do you think his message would be today? <laughs> One, he might put me to the side and say, son, you say it too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to keep you out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I do think that this would be his message. Yeah. You know, I watched the interview that Bishop Greg Davis did with Pop. I think I reposted it on my page, on my social. But in the interview, Greg Davis asked Pop some things concerning what God was doing right now concerning social justice. And Pop's response right on time still speaks now he said you know he says that man will rally around what their heart issue is man will rally around certain things that their community finds important but man will oftentimes only rally around that and what can happen then is that it it creates its own segregation. And he talked about the difference between Peter and Paul's ministry. You may remember this. In saying that this is what Peter did. Peter would give himself over to the local issue and then abandon, if you will, the bigger kingdom construct, plan, focus, etc. And Paul outlasted Peter because Paul was always focused on the kingdom things. He developed the ability to be concerned with the communal heart issues coupled with the things that did not affect people that look just like him. So I can be concerned with black rights while being concerned with Asian happenings and Hispanic dealings and stuff that's affecting Caucasians as well. I can not segment anybody, be concerned with it all at the same time. And Pop is one of the few, maybe the only, who was able to be vocal about it. Many may take the pathway of let's just pray or you know but pop would be able to speak what everybody felt included mm -hmm. and understood considered cared for in the positions that he took wow. i think that's what he's speaking still now wow that's good thanks for sharing that, that that's good that's yes, good you know as we get ready to um time is almost drawing to a near uh, what do you think he would say about your book? What do you think? <laughs> what do you think he would say? You think he'd be like, "Man, I'm proud of you." Would he hit you on the back of the head? What, what, he, what would he say? I, I think it'd be a mirror of emotions. Okay. I think that he would be excited um, about much of what I share. I think that going back to my my joke earlier, we'll be across the street <laughs> concerning some <laughs> things. Um, but overall, I think that he would sit back and say, wow, 
I didn't know that you saw that or viewed that like that. It's a lot in that. This is going to help people. This is going to bring some healing. It helped me, son, and I'm with you. Good. That's good. That's good. Come on, y'all give me them hearts and thumbs up online. And uh, we're going to take a couple of questions. If anybody wants to ask a question tonight, go ahead and type that in in our chat. And uh, we can get these questions uh, out to uh, Elder Edward tonight so he can answer some of our questions tonight. Um, so uh, in, in talking about what he would say and what he'd think about the book, I mean, that, that's wonderful. I'm glad you explained uh, what, what, you, what you thought he would say about your book at this point. And uh, the whole sex ed thing, you didn't give me a lot of what I wanted out of that, but I'm going to let it go. <laughs> we, we do that on part two once we, they don't read it. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we were really diving into that. My wife was, you know, we were really intrigued by the, the educational piece uh, because a lot of times in ministry or church, we don't want to touch that subject. We don't want to go there. Uh, uh, even, even talking about what you just finished talking about, allowing children to name their own sex and things like that. We don't really want to touch that, afraid of losing uh, the popular vote, if you will, or people saying in this season, I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm going to leave your church because I want, I believe in that stance. I believe in that right. And I think, you know, society today would be a lot better uh, if our children were taught that early on, trained that early on. And I know some of the things in the book you talked about, you know, um, is even being in church, but still doing other things. Yeah. Uh, like, uh, how, what do you say? Um, hide and go seek. Oh, we call that hide and go get it. Hide and yeah. go get it. Yeah, that's, that's hood right there. But, yeah. but yeah. he, he understands. He, he, yeah. he, uh, you know, some, some, some of the parents and him gave some whoopings about hide and go get it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to actually explain that on here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Because we don't want nobody trying it in nobody's church. Uh, but, but so uh, in, in learning all of that and, and being a youth pastor and uh, taking over that part of it, was that the time then you were sharing some of those things with the young people in, in the ministry and letting them know how you grew up? You knew the tricks. You knew the game. You could see it because you experienced it. How did that, those conversations go with some of them and how have you seen some of them because you've been inspirational to some my daughters my biological daughters I remember you you know I would talk to you from time to time you'd reach out to them when they would start going to college and you know even when they were with new birth for sure yeah because uh Sonora uh went, was grew up with uh Taylor and uh I think Jared graduated the year before they did right and uh so uh, and I know you would reach out and you know kind of let me know talk to them and keep them going so what, what would you share with now, I guess it would be Sonora, Taylor, Jared's turn now mm -hmm. to be making the same impartation? Um, what I would share with them now, <laughs> I do this with my brother all the time, is uh, I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that's, the, that's the right now. Yeah. Um, no, no, but I, I want to share because I don't know who's watching this, you know, youth pastors, yeah. uh, senior pastors, uh, you know, yeah. youth workers, teachers even. You know, um, you want to be very careful as to what you present to a child. Yeah. All right. Um, at the same time, you want to be very careful of what you withhold. So it, 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 it's, it's a funny song and dance balance that, that, that I'm, 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 I'm challenging, challenging us with right now. So, so what happens is this. The way I see it, the Lord is telling us, the more that you draw nigh unto me, the more I draw unto you so so when we're dealing with young folks if they come to you and they got a question about something once heard a person ask a question once you talk to kids about sex the minute they bring it up mm. oftentimes parents may shy away from something oh you too long to know about that if they came and mentioned it to you The, the window curtain is already being pulled back. So it's two choices now. You can either be a part of the portrait they see 
yeah. as the curtain is being drawn back, yeah. or somebody else, the enemy, can paint that picture. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. There, 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 here, here's a situation where, you know, a seed has been planted somewhere. TV, stream, a conversation overheard, something they saw by care. We don't know. But when the question comes up, that's the time to speak to it. All right? And the luxury of that, again, is you get to paint the picture. Sex is a beautiful thing that God has created for people who are married. Because now we're getting into the law of first love. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know what that means, it's like when they say a first, impre first impression is the lasting impression. How you learn something is how you innately take to it. All right? So uh, for a person, if their first dating relationship is an abusive relationship, then that set the bar. So I get into another uh, relationship. If it's abusive, it's, well, this is what relationships are. How many of my peers who I talk to is like, bro, I done been in a bad relationship with this and fighting and arguing because that's what I saw from my parents. I just saw, then I got with this person. It was like, whoa, I went looking for a fight with them. Because it's like, well, something is wrong. We're not yeah. arguing. We're not, this ain't right. You sneaky youth. <laughs> because of the anticipation of it, because of the precedence that was set. So that's the first thing. Then you know the kids you're dealing with. If you got the knucklehead, sometimes you got to go a little deeper with them to share certain things. Going back to what my dad said to me, I dealt with all of y'all differently. My dad gave me one whooping with a belt, two whoopings with his cap of wood. Whole life. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. My oldest sibling, he had to wrestle him, choke him, you know, all of this. But my oldest sibling tried to kill my dad. Mm -hmm. He was 16, 17, whatever. He pulled a knife on my dad. Mm -hmm. I never would even think to do that. So it got to the point, Pop just had to speak to me. I ain't need a whole deliberation. With my older sibling, he got to take stuff away. He got to go do investigations. He got to do all this kind of stuff. You know, really be forceful. Mm -hmm. So it's the same thing in this. There was some, I had to tell him like, man, you know, I know she fine, I know she thick, I know she got this and that, you know, woo -woo, man, I've been there. And get on their level. Yeah, you know, it's probably all that. I know, I know you done been there. I know you've been with her, but this is what the future gonna look like with that. But then you got Tiny Timmy, who always got his Bible on him. Mm -hmm. You know, and really the scare tactics may work. Just, hey man, you know, God ain't gonna be happy with you. Right. If you know, if you get do this and that. And they, they set for life. Yeah. Others you talk to tell them about what God said. They're like, bro, I don't even believe in God right now, man. Right, <laughs> right. So it takes one to know one. Right. You feel me? Yeah. And again, there's a different barometer. The summation of all I'm saying is that have discernment. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Thank you so much. Hey, we're going to have to get out of here in a minute, but uh, a couple of questions came in online. We'll all right. get these out the way, and then we're going to get you out of here. Uh, one question was, have you ever found yourself being rebellious? Oh, 100%. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I, I thought we was coming with some tough ones, Facebook. <laughs> What's up? Yeah, I was rebellious against the whole church. Young, dirty bishop out here rapping in churches and stuff. Come on, man. <laughs> Absolutely. And then it says, how was it growing up with your father's and your father's legacy? How was that just growing up, I guess, behind all of that is what the question was. I'm still growing through it. Yeah. Pop ain't went nowhere. Yeah. You feel me? We still growing through it. Um, his, his presence is felt often. And so, you know, we pray for grace from the Lord. Yeah. And um, we take on the challenge of being honorable and not disrespectful and doing what's right. Yeah. And, you know, in, in, in preparation for parenting, if you will, you know, seeing things through a totally different lens now. Doing what I'm going to want my children to do in my presence and my absence. It ain't no joke, man. Yeah. Awesome. 
All right, y'all give us some uh, thumbs up and some hearts online as we get ready to bring it into a, a close. And uh, I just wanted to say that um, um, thank you. Thank you. Uh, for uh, being a friend. Thank you for being a brother. Thank you for being family. Yes, and uh, thank you for being true to who you are. Mm. Uh, no matter where I meet you, you're always the same, and I'm appreciative <laughs> of that. And um, I'm thankful for the Long family. Praise God. I am. I'm, I'm thankful for the Long family. And uh, my church knows that affectionately, um, um, I call Bishop Long dad today, mm -hmm. always will. Um, I'm not the guy that has a whole bunch of dads. Um, there's still a office down the hallway in our church that has his name on it. For sure. Uh, that, that will Thank stay you. there uh, forever, and we will always be tied together uh, as family. So thank you so much, man, for just being who you are. Wow. Proud of you. Proud of the man that you are, you. and the proud of the man that you're going to be and how you're going to affect uh, the nation. Praise I really God. believe that. I really believe that. I feel that leaping off of the pages of the book. Mm. I feel the energy leaping off of you. Mm. Thank you for pushing through. Thank you for pushing through because you could have just said, you know, the heck with this, went into a place of isolation and depression and said the heck with it. Mm -hmm. But you continue to push it, push through and persevere. And I know the family appreciates the body of Christ, mm -hmm. appreciates you and your gifting and you pushing through and help to carry the legacy of your dad on. I appreciate you. Thank Come you. on, let's give him a hand Thank clap you. of praise Bless uh, Thank on you. today. Thank you. So. Right before we're going to get ready uh, and uh, receive our offering tonight, and uh, those of you who want to uh, sow into the ministry, it should be on the lower thirds. You can do that. You can text give the 54244 to NH Donate. We ask all of those that can, we'll give at least a $20 seed on tonight to be a blessing uh, to our ministry on tonight. You can utilize our Zelle and then also our PayPal uh, link on tonight as well. And as you're doing that, you gather your seed, you gather your offering tonight. Tell them one more time, how can they get your book? Um, is it Amazon? Is it on e-read? How can we get this book? How can everybody get it? Great question. Outstanding. Listen, it's two ways. Very simple. You can go to www.edlongjr.com. E-D-L-O-N-G-J-R.com. Click on the merchandise tab and then scroll down to where you see the book. Click on that link. And uh, you will see an Amazon tab there, which will redirect you to Amazon. Or you can go directly to Amazon, type in Son of a Bishop, Ed Long Jr., and two versions will come up. The ebook for $9.99 or the paperback will come uh, on display. Take your choice. I'm honored by either. And I thank you so much. Amen. Hey, what a way to start Black History Month by talking about the book. The son of a bishop. <laughs> and uh, so we look forward to you coming back real soon, man, to minister to the congregation, to share with us. We, we miss you. And uh, looking forward to you coming back, sharing with us on a Sunday morning real, real soon. So y'all be on the lookout for that. That's coming soon. He'll bring a bunch of books with him to sign them, I'm sure. And that's going to be an incredible, incredible time. Anything you want to say in closing before we close out? I'm just honored again. I thank you. I thank your family, uh, everybody that's here tonight, everyone that is streaming. Listen, we love you. We love you for life, and we know that that's reciprocated from you to us. So, as always, don't stop. Keep going. All right. Hey, New Hope, we out of here tonight. See you all in the morning on the prayer call. That's right, at 6 a.m. One call. One call. That's all. 6 a.m. in the morning on our prayer call. We'll see you real soon. Shalom. Peace.